So at the time of this recording, Apple's uh, iPhone keynote, supposedly, is just a few weeks away. And everybody all over the internet who's into tech already knows what's coming. I think that's a little bit of a shame. I mean, I'd like to still be surprised by something. Um, but that said, I'm going to take this video to talk about my personal predictions for this uh, keynote, what I think um, about what's happening. Starting with the iPhone 10 successor. Now, a lot of people were wondering about the names. I personally think that the 6.1 inch is simply going to be called iPhone, kind of like what Apple did with uh, with dropping the 2, 3, 4 from the iPad moniker with this year's iPad release um, for the education market. So we're, my guess is we'll probably have iPhone and iPhone 10s and iPhone 10s plus and I again basing that on Apple what Apple did with the iPad this year as well as the traditional naming moniker of what's happened in the past with the other iPhones now I've spent a bit more time with the iPhone 10 the current one and I have to say that I think I'm actually gonna go with the um, 10s the 5.8 inch model the reason is because it gives me a slightly bigger screen 5.8 5.8 inches versus 5.5 inches in a form factor that is considerably smaller and um, after having used uh, big phones like my Google Pixel here for the last um, almost two years I'm actually looking forward to that I've been very closely monitoring these notch phones um, and a lot of people don't like the notch but I do it helps me know which way is up there's also a new feature in iOS 12 that's coming that's supposedly going to allow emergency responders to get an exact encrypted secure uh, location for when you may need you know EMS to come out um, and that's on top of the SOS service that, that Apple already has which I think is truly remarkable and wonderful these are the kinds of things that um, these are the kinds of things that I like to see um, so there's the current iPhones that are coming out supposedly they're gonna have this a12 chip there's going to be you know the usual spec bump etc etc um, I'm trying to remember well I'm gonna tell you straight up if you want the specs you can go and take a look at them online um, because I personally cannot remember them at the moment <laughs> but me as a as a partially blind consumer um, I've already mentioned in a prior video that I was going to switch back to the iPhone and after having spent more time with the iPhone 10 and having heard about these new features again particularly the uh, the new encrypted emergency uh, uh, responder location um, service that that's going to be rolling out with iOS 12 that alone as far as I'm concerned makes it makes the switch back to the iPhone definitely worth it that's on top of things like SOS very reliable accessibility if you want um, chances are if you want an accessible app it's going to come to the iPhone first and that makes sense from a development standpoint because you have only one interface to develop for. You've got one breed of processor to develop for. Yes, each has a is a different generation, but overall, it's pretty much the same as far as the base. Versus um, having to develop for multiple versions of Android, multiple skins of Android, multiple processors of Android, and you can see where something might work on one and not work so well on another. I've had instances where apps 
would be perfectly fine on iOS, but not talk at all on Android. And my um, my eye condition, my postcapsular opacity, which affects 20% of cataract patients, my doctor reported that the number has increased from, I think it was 0.1 to 0.3 or maybe 0.3 to 0.5, I'm not sure. I think it was 0.1 to 0.3, but to me that sounded like a jump. It wasn't a super significant jump, but it was a jump. And here we are a year later, and I'm no longer at the point where I can utilize my computer uh, completely without um, some form of magnification or screen reading. Um, so I'm looking at preserving what vision I can. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to using voiceover like I did before the cataract surgery. Um, but there's definitely there's the new iPhone to look forward to. And a lot of people want the 6.5 inch. I'll admit that for a while I was looking at that. But as I said before, after having looked at, after having used phones like the Google Pixel, I'm ready for something with a big screen and a smaller size. One of the comments that I've gotten a lot of is, I don't want to do without my home button, which I can completely understand. The home button was a tactile uh, home base as to which way was up for your iPhone. Um, it helped to orientate your iPhone depending on which position you were in. And I think that's partially, re the, partially the reason why Apple in voiceover on iOS 11 still has the home button announcement on the iPhone 10. Um, but let's take a look at the industry. A lot of phones these days are coming out with a near bezel-less design following an Apple's wake. You've also got the Oppo Find X that is going to be like practically no notch but no bezels either practically. Um, you know that is that's really getting high marks on the Android side. But the point is bezels are disappearing and I think that from an accessibility perspective, we're just going to have to get used to it. Um, I can tell you that it's gotten, it's taken a little getting used to, but I'm extremely comfortable with the gestures in iOS um, 11 on the iPhone 10. Granted, I still, I'm using, instead of lifting my finger immediately, I find myself waiting and having voiceover announce exactly where I am. Because I'm not good at judging depth, so having you know having that extra um, tooltip in there is a real help for me. But it's not it's honestly not a bad transition. It's one that I've gotten used to pretty quickly. And for those of you who have a current generation um, iPad that'll that'll run iOS 12, these gestures that I've just described on the iPhone, and you can go ahead and take a look at my video from two months ago about a day with electronic fruit. Um, and I called it that because I was playing with both the iPhone 10 as well as reading up on the BlackBerry uh, Key 1, so Apple, BlackBerry, Fruit. Anyway, um, anyway, so if you have a current generation iPad, you put iOS 12 on it, there's going to be the opportunity to practice these, these new gestures. And a lot of people are pointing at these gestures as a, as a hint that we're going to have a bezel-less or near bezel-less iPad. Now I personally like that Excuse me, because it would be nice to have, I currently have a 12.5 inch iPad Pro and what would be really cool is to be able to sneak in a 13 inch screen into that same form factor. More, more real estate, more it, it, more, you know, a lot of times more isn't always better but in terms of screen size um, for what usable vision I do have, more is better. The only other thing that we have firm confirmation on, supposedly, is the new Apple Watch. And we're going to get a bigger screen there. We're going to get a bigger battery there. I suspect we're probably going to have the usual spec bump. I haven't really paid much attention to watchOS 5. Um, because until now I hadn't really thought about getting one. But I'm actually thinking about getting both an iPhone and an Apple Watch. And again, the primary reason is all these things like um, things like SOS on the Apple Watch, and a lot of people are saying, well, it's available on Android. Here's the thing. If I lose my vision, 
and I'm out and about, and somebody's approaching me, and it sounds like they might not have good intentions, would you rather I have a device that might work and talk to me, or will work and talk to me? Because just pushing the button is not enough. I would need to know. I mean, obviously you would hear the screech, but I would like to know beforehand, you know, or after, after, afterhand that it's like that um, the fo the watch is calling emergency contacts or something, you know. And without the without the screen reader, if I lose my vision, that's going to be a real problem. And I've heard some Android Wear devices, or I should say Wear OS devices, have gotten this feature. But I think and here's the problem. I think Google is abandoning the platform. I think they might also be abandoning Android as well. I'm not certain about that, but given what I've been given the things that I've been reading up over this past year, it wouldn't surprise me. And that un that kind of uncertainty is something that I genuinely cannot live with when it comes to accessibility, safety, uh, usability. Um, you know. A lot of people have said, oh, Apple just works. And granted, that's not always been the case. Everybody makes mistakes. But I'd rather have something that has had a record of just working, um, especially with speech, rather than having something that may or may not work. I mean, you go up to an Apple product in, a, in the store, and if you, have, if you have any kind of vision impairment, you can literally go up to it, turn on Siri, and tell Siri to turn on voiceover. Whereas with the Galaxy Note 9 demo unit, I couldn't get TalkBack running at all. There was actually an alert saying that the demo that Samsung had preloaded on the device prevented TalkBack from starting. So, it is for these reasons that I'm honestly rather impatiently waiting for the Apple Keynote, and I'm very much looking forward to it. What do you guys think? Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.